What's up, Rockstars? Today is a great day because I am covering all of board games. I am doing a huge news update, unlike any I've done before, so stay tuned. We're going to be covering a ton of stuff, not just crowdfunding. We're going to do retail. We're going to do the community. We're going to do hot topics. We're going to do it all, so let's get to it. Thank you to my channel sponsor and to the AM. Support the channel and get an awesome premium shirt I designed with them by using the link in the description below to purchase Eternal Guardian. From the lopsided crown, wolves, Norse throne, and more, this shirt is spectacular and you can save 10% off when buying this fantastic shirt. Check it out and many other awesome shirts via the link down below. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons and YouTube members for their financial support. If you appreciate the videos I do every single week and you can give even a dollar a month, there is a link down below. Thank you so much. Additionally, I'd like to personally welcome my latest members. That is Dan Montagnier, Chris Hogren, Silicor, and Justin Phillips. Guys, welcome and thank you so much. And right before we get into the nitty gritty, real quick, I want to give a big shout out to my sponsor of today's video, the long-term sponsor of the channel as a whole, into the AM. I'm wearing one of their shirts right now. They make awesome shirts. They fit great. They last. I have washed this shirt dozens and dozens of times at this point. Wear it all the time. It still looks fantastic. They are great priced. There's a ton of cool designs. Quickly, just to show you some of the new stuff here because they are on fire lately. They have so much going on. Like this framed kind of look. I love the space over the mountains with the stream. Of course, this space octopus thing's freaking sweet. I love camping and it's big and bright. Right? And if you want color, you got the melting tie-dye freaking planets or the freaking like uh, NASA dude with the plants growing through it. Or even the shirt I designed myself. You can get that here as well. Guys, there's so much cool stuff here. And it's just all fun. They do great work, great quality product, and it's super cheap. In fact, you can get 10% off anything they sell down in the description below. Go in and click that link. That's 10% off any sales. That's 10% off no matter what. You get it there. You put in that code. You're good to go. I got you covered. They got you covered. Thank you into the AM so much. And now let's dive in. There is so much to go over, guys. I'm going to be going very fast paced. I will have a follow up news video that's longer form where I will be talking about some of these points more in depth. So stay tuned for that if you'd like to. You can go ahead and subscribe to see that. But let's just jump into it. I'm going to start with the community section, actually. League of Games or Liege of Games, I apologize. I always say that wrong. Liege of Games is, did this really cool video, Top Overrated Board Games. He looked at the top 150 board on Board Game Geek and said, these are the ones I feel are overrated. First of all, props for doing that. I clicked it though, because when I hovered my mouse over it, I saw he was listing Nemesis, so I had to give him a shout out. There's a link to everything I'm covering down in the description below. There's a ton of links. Control F is probably your friend there. Uh, but anyway, let's go ahead and keep going. I will spoil the rest so you, and you can see why he says what he says. There's some popular ones on there for sure. Very interesting video. Also, Adepticon Hap, uh, happened. I'm showing Mini Yak's video here because he's always kind of entertaining when he goes through there because he's a silly, goofy little guy. Um, I don't know if he's little or not, but he's the other ones at least. Either way, uh, Depticon was really big in the kind of gaming sphere. That was kind of a recent thing that happened, and he did a great video kind of showing it all, focusing on a lot of the miniatures and painting because that's just his jam, of course. Also, also, this is super cool. You guys know Anastir. I'll be showing it off later, but look at this. Playable freaking Anastir, the video game, not a real thing. I think what this is, is because I don't even speak the, the language that's being posted here. I believe this is how they filmed the, 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 the trailer, right? Because they have like the miniature there or whatever, but they film it because you can like control a camera stuff like that, but it's in like Unreal Engine 5 or something like that. So it's also kind of playable in this sense too. They actually go on later and like ride a freaking uh, wyvern and stuff. It just, this would be so cool. What a cool world. I love the world of this game. It's just wild. So yeah, yeah, let's just, let's just go <laughs> on a freaking mount because why not? Looks super cool. I thought you guys would get a kick out of that. I think that's pretty neat. Okay, uh, moving right along, Gloomhaven Helper. If you are one of the 150 
thousand users of this or if you need to be or want to be you have until may 12th to download it before it's taken down isaac has revoked the rights to it um essentially this guy did the app like you know kind of just did all the work whatever but after doing it in 12 languages and supporting all those users and uh, two different expansions on it he's done a lot of work on it it became a lot with the web hosting and all that stuff so the uh, app version the mobile version he started charging for and then Isaac stepped in and said okay hey I'm gonna have to take 10% of all your profits because you're using my uh, um, you know art and stuff like that but uh, he doesn't want to do a Frosthaven one and then Isaac said okay you know what never mind I'm cutting a ties to that so you can't have that anymore so uh, that's going away you will not have a Gloomhaven helper app anymore at least not by this guy perhaps Isaac is wanting to have another company do it we'll have to see but if you like the Gloomhaven helper app or if you want it, be sure to download it and before May 12th, 2022. Again, I'll have a link to this down in the description below. Be sure to do that at the end of the video or whatever. Even if you just think you might need it in the future, totally worth it. Okay, next up, this is by Chern An Ng. And again, I apologize if I'm saying that wrong. I probably am. My apologies. I can barely speak English. He is the head honcho at come on if you didn't know i thought this was kind of interesting he posted this publicly so i'm sharing it he said we get unsolicited game proposals occasionally a common thread i've noticed is weird personal information being submitted in the intro stuff like i'm 25 i had a lot of free time during the quarantine so i did this thing etc i kind of swing between this as charmingly innocent to somewhat self-absorbed to you seem to be trying to make friends using tmi generally this kind of thing will start the sender firmly in the negative points fun fact if you're submitting an item to come on, they don't care about you, just your game. Fun fact, I'm actually kind of the opposite. For instance, I would have never covered Bantam West if Ike didn't email me talking about how he was a veteran and hearing all that. My parents met in the military. It's a big part of my life and I have much respect for that. And he was super respectful and that's what caught my eye. That's what made me look at it. it the, the term Bantam West did not get a click because I'm just not super into Westerns. That was always my father's thing. Um, <laughs> but I saw how cool that the kind of sandbox thing was and what he was doing there. And and again, I, that personal information made it relatable to me. So if you're sending an email to me, feel free to give me that TMI because I care about you, not just your game. But, you know, I'm not a business. He is. So, you know, it, it's, it's just kind of interesting to see that we're almost polar opposites on that. They, they, they start you negative. Like, I don't care about you. I care about your game. Sounds kind of bad. I know he didn't word it that way. But I knew that I've had personal experience on the opposite end of that. So I thought that was kind of interesting. But you never know who you're talking to, you know, and, and how they're going to read what you're saying. I say you send whatever emails you want. And whoever picks it up, it was meant to be. And that's my opinion there. Okay, next up, the top video on BGG for the last 30 days. The hot one here is the Viticulture World Cooperative. Um, uh, um, it, 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 the title is actually, We Can't Review Viticulture World Yet. I will talk about that later. At the very end of the video, we're going to do controversies. I'll, I'll, I'll explain exactly what's going on there or why it's so hot. Uh, but there is definitely a reason for that. But my feedback on that is probably not what you think. So if you've seen the video, I doubt you expect what I'm going to say. So uh, stay tuned for that, I guess. All right, next up, this is Asmodee's calendar. They show this off all the time. Really, May 20th, May 27th, these are the big days for a lot of the big name stuff. They are really stuff all the time. I'm trying to distill it down to the things you might be interested in. There are Marvel Champion packs. We get Ironheart and Nova, and we get Mad Massive Darkness 2, the Sleeve Pack, plus the Hellscape, plus the Heavenfall, and the Fae Folk. And so it, it's like the Massive Darkness 2, May 20th. And then some Marvel Champion stuff there. So that's that. And then May 27th, you get, you know, an Arkham Horror expansion, some more Massive Darkness stuff. So this is like, um, it's weird that it's like a week separated. I'm not sure exactly why they have that. Maybe this is too much. But we got the Star Wars X-Wing stuff going on. So a uh, just some really interesting stuff there. And then they go spring, so in general. I'll do this every month. I'll see kind of what, what they're coming up, if there's anything big. Or Fantasy Flight Games. We're going to be covering that here very, very shortly. But first, let's talk about Dragonlance. If you don't know what Dragonlance is, um, you may have heard of some other versions of D&D, some other worlds, right? Uh, but the Dragonlance uh, kind of uh, skew on that is a specific 
specific setting. So like magic is a little bit different there and they, they have uh, like uh, di different gods and situations there. And they actually talk about this um, quite a bit, which is very interesting. Um, it, for instance, Forgotten Realms is another version of this. Well, this is like that. They are coming out late 2022 with an adventure book and battle game. This is a proper board game uh, called Warriors of Kirin or uh, Kyrin or you know, Kryn, Kryn, whatever it might be. Listen to this, though. This is big on who is making it. Um, let's see. If, okay. So uh, Rob, who did Risk Legacy, and Steven, who did Hero Quest and Battle Masters. So there's some heavy stuff here. This is, a, from my understanding, a kind of a, a cult classic where people really enjoyed this uh, this world that the people made. Um, the the power levels aren't quite as you know crazy, and um, the, the it, it just it, it's a different spin on it and. Kind of cool that they're tying the two together like that too with the board game as well. So uh, probably going to be pretty big. I don't know if it'll be on you know like the um, uh, um, uh, any kind of crowdfunding thing or anything like that. But I'll keep you posted. Okay, let's go to the Fantasy Flight Games Sinister Motives. This came out earlier in April, but it's kind of the last big expansion for Marvel Marvel Champions. Uh, there's a ton of stuff here that you get a lot of different heroes that you can have and all that stuff. And of course, anytime you put Sinister and and, and Spider Man, you get kind of so they do have the Sinister Six in there. So you have the Venom and Mysterio and all those other kind of favorites that people enjoy so much. So uh, that's the big one there. That being said, you see that $44.99, you can already get it for $35.99 from Miniature Market, um, which it is like owned by the same company. So like it, it just works, right? So uh, yeah, go ahead and shop on, online if you want to, to support them, or if you want to support your friend and local gaming store, you can always go there as well. Of course, either way, 45, 35, somewhere around there is kind of what you're going to be charged for that. And again, you get a ton of different cards for that. Uh, speaking of which, Miniature Market does have an eight, up to 80% off on the tabletop minis. It says tabletop minis, a lot of it is come on. Come on is maybe like 80% of the sale. So uh, there's also some infinity stuff and stuff like that. Feel free to check that out as well. That's a pretty good sale that's going on there. Spider is the hero pack that also came out recently. So that's another recent one, even more recent towards the end of April, just, just I think last week at the time of filming. So um, that is available as well. And again, $16.99, you can probably find some deals if you shop around. Okay, now let's talk about Kickstarters that are available right now. Kickstarters Game Founds, I don't know what the plural of that is, the crowdfunded stuff. We are at Anastir. This has been a personal favorite of mine. I've been pumped for this game style and the game theme. I think it looks beautiful and it plays really, really fun. Very, um, it's non like complex um, in, in the sense that you're not doing like 80 million different things. You roll dice, you see what you did, you, you, you do your actions, you do your special abilities, you play your cards, you have some fun. That's what I'm all about is the fun there. They have added some expansions. I'm gonna quickly show them just so you're aware if I can get to them because the scroll on here is ridiculous. You can see some of the uh, um, uh, extras and, and cool stuff there, of course. But uh, th I think they're gonna do two more expansions, I think is what they said, something like that. There's some of the stretch goals there. So they have the Queen's Vow, which is the latest one. This is the latest one they've added. So you may not have seen this. Uh, but again, I think, I mean, this guy looks amazing and this guy looks amazing and they all look super cool, blah, blah, blah. And then we have the Fog of the Revolt expansion. That was another one that was added. They got these cool, like, uh, freaking longhorn ram goat things that are going on there. And again, just more and more stuff. They always have kind of these big piece uh, ones in each expansion. The All Mother Secret expansion. I expect we're going to get that um, giant uh, carnivorous plant as a mini at some point. You also have a giant character, which is super cool, but he can't ride the, <laughs> you don't get a mounted version of him, which is sad. So he he might play a little bit different. He got these like saber tooth tigers and, you know, cool stuff like that. So, and then of course the carnivorous plant thing. So anyway, yeah, that's what's new there. Moving on, we have DC deck building game 10th anniversary. The big thing to cover here is they added a bombshell expansion that uh, people will get there. Um, this DC DC Comics bombshell. Uh, this is not Kickstarter exclusive, though they have been adding a lot of Kickstarter exclusive cards. They've really been adding more there. Um, 
So I, I still need to decide if I'm going to do the $70 one or not. Uh, I do not think I'd do the 135 and I'm certainly not going to do the 200 or 250 or the 345. These are, a lot of these are just giving you a storage box and like mats and stuff like that, which I'm not as interested in. I just want all gameplay content. Um, but I have been rereading Injustice as kind of a celebration and my goodness, it's such a fun, I, like I, I, it's funny and it's sad and it's epic and it's cool and I I love the series so I'm I'm a big fan of the comic and uh, yeah we'll, we'll we'll see if I end up biting we still got 14 days it's a long campaign all right next up the dark quarter they are doing great as well 759,000 so almost 760 and shoot it might it might update here when I'm just looking at it uh, they are kind of doing part of the course they're they're still doing their unlocks and doing their their normal thing um, it I didn't really see anything that like super stood out to me, but I haven't been following it the closest. So if there is anything, feel free to let me know. And in fact, if there's anything you think that I should be adding to the list or looking at, again, let me know in the comments. Feel free to. That's totally fine. Um, it, it, all you're doing is helping everybody that reads that, not just me. So yeah. Anyway, as you can see, it looks, you know, same old, same old to me anyway. Um, all right. Next up we have... Uh, Uprising Titans of the First Age. This has been doing very well, 432,000. Uh, as a disclaimer, I helped consult on the page. So if you liked the page, you're welcome. Uh, I'm glad I could help. If you didn't like the page, I don't want to hear it. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But either way, uh, yeah, super cool. It's it's nice that they're not doing any kind of like sunken cost fallacy where they're like, you know, oh my gosh, you know, you already paid this. Well, here's another add-on. Here's another add-on. Here's another add-on. Suddenly you're you know, play, spending triple what you thought you were going to do or anything like that. It's just make a really pretty game that a lot of people like that's kind of unique and offer some more of it. And I think that's pretty cool. So really happy to see that for them. Uh, but they're still unlocking stuff. Sleeping God's Distance, guys, this thing's blown away. 1.3 million. It's been kind of chilling, though. And that's because just like Uprising, it, less than Uprising, actually, they haven't had a whole lot of like anything new to bring people in per se. Uh, they do have though this, I'm right before they're going to be uh, opening this. So link down in the description below, you can see what the new thing is. They added four character miniatures, another one. I don't know what they're going to add here. You're going to have to find out. I'll cover in the next news video though. All right, next up we have Escape from Stalingrad Z. They have been unlocking a lot of gameplay stuff. So new scenarios and stuff like that. Not just like, you know, oh, hey, here's another mini. Oh, hey, here's another mini. They do have new minis. New minis are always welcome. Everybody loves new minis, but they actually have gameplay that they've been adding to. So it's just getting more and more stuff, more and more things to do, more and more content for you guys, which is super cool and a nice thing to do, I think. Next up, we have the Great Wall reprint. 523, again, it's also been kind of staying steady. And again, that's because it, it's kind of a reprint. They have the new expansion and stuff like that, but they're not really doing like, uh, you know, anything crazy when it comes to um, stretch goals or anything like that. It's just kind of, it is what it is. Assault on Doom Rock Ultimate Edition. This one has been chilling at the 150 for quite some time as well. There hasn't been a lot of traction on that, and I'm not exactly sure why. Um, if you have any idea on why this hasn't gotten bigger, feel free to let me know. I figured with the name uh, Ultimate Edition that that would really drive some more, but it's just kind of just kind of stagnated, I feel, and I'm not exactly sure why. So, uh, yeah, feel free to uh, um, share with us why that might be. All right, now, 3D printing real quick because I think this is cool. This is Spool Tower 2, the respooling. Essentially, when you print, you have these spools that that you, you have this empty plastic thing, and they're like, well, instead of wasting all of that plastic, let's use it. And so what they do is they have a thing where you can print very minimal printing, um, essentially uh, to surround it and make it something actually usable, uh, reuse instead of just, you know, recycle the plastic and stuff like that, which I think is super cool. It's a genius thing to do. It's very smart, very nice for the environment. I love it. I think that's a great thing to do. And it looks like they do a great job of it too. Like these are like legitimate looking things. So very cool to do. And it's neat that because you already have that structure, like you, first of all, it's solidly made, but second of all, like it just, it takes way less to print these really impressive things. So if you just think these look cool, or if you want them to, you know, spice up um, Star Wars Legion or a Warhammer game or something like that, 
this is something that I think you might enjoy. That being said, three days to go at the time of filming, you're gonna have like a day left by the time you see this. So link in the description below. Go ahead and check it out if you're interested and go ahead and back it. And honestly, like it's it's not even like a whole lot of money, which is really nice to see. I'm glad they're not you know charging a whole lot for it for, because it looks like quality. All right, RuneScape. Let's talk about what's coming up. RuneScape uh, Kingdoms. Uh, this one is going to be big. This is by SFG. And as you can see, they are uh, have a unique art style, which is very reminiscent of the game, which I think is smart. What they're talking about uh, in a lot of this is that um, while it's the, the sculpt design is like that, the detail level is very modern. I'll show these off closer in just a moment here. One thing I wanted to point out here isn't just the dragon and stuff like this, but the fact that you actually have the life skill mini. I think that's hilarious. He's got the chef hat and the pickaxe and stuff like that. They mention a fishing rod. I do not see a fishing rod on there, but what the heck do I know? Um, either way, this will be coming out. Uh, they actually listed it at the very end of the month. I think it's like literally the very end, yeah, May 31st. So uh, there is uh, the page. So I'm gonna link that so you guys can come and follow this. This is gonna show it a little bit closer here. You can see some of the minis and, and kind of the, the design style they're going for. Honestly, when it comes to styles like this, it's so easy to print like it's it and make it look nice. It'll look nice. But you can see there's still the, you know, the quite a lot of detail here, right? The fire is still, you know, fairly detailed and all that. Like it, it, it looks like they're designing it in a way to where it, it captures that, but still looks really good. So, uh, yeah, very cool to see that. Um, I'm pretty excited for it. It definitely looks different. I love the idea of life skilling and playing the life skiller, you know, where you have like, I'm really good at fishing and I just slayed a dragon like that. That's RuneScape. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> okay, next up, Townsfolk Tussles getting more stuff sometime this year, but we don't know when. Sometime later. Three expansions, actually. Like, they have been going all out. So, yeah, coming in 2022, you have these three expansions. I'm, I'm assuming one campaign, by the way. So, one campaign with three new things. And uh, I'll, I'll go in the link down below, but they kind of talk a little bit about each one and what each one will kind of do. Uh, the first two, anyway. The third one's still kind of a mystery. Uh, okay, next up, Tiny Epic Vikings is announced. And this is coming out soon, May 10th. Now, I, I was told... <laughs> Well, one of my patrons said, this isn't Tiny Epic Vikings. It's, it's essentially like um, uh, Tiny Epic Blood Rage, which is like, oh my gosh, okay, well, maybe I am a little bit interested. At first, I kind of wasn't. There is some drama around this. Gamelin can't take it, get, you know, get, get, it can't catch a break. And so I'll be talking about that in the controversy section coming up here in a little bit. But we got a lot more to go. Batman Gotham City Chronicles Season 3 and the RPG. May 24th is when this will be launching. So be on the lookout for that. It's going to be big. Now, I know Escape from Arkham Asylum was delayed, but I don't know what they're going to do. I, I'm assuming it'll be after this at this point, which is kind of a bummer because I think they were ready well before, but they had uh, some mishaps with uh, with, with uh, staying healthy and safe by the sounds of it. So hopefully that's all wrapped up and we can see what they have to bring after this. But having two Batman at the same time might be a little too much Batman. So that'll be kind of interesting to see how they react to that. But either way, this is going to be big. That being said, that they've mentioned like they don't want to inundate you with minis that's not their goal they want to inundate you with more content and more ways to enjoy what you already have um, and quality life improvements stuff like that so they're talking player aids they're talking rule book rewrite they're talking uh solo co-op and stuff like that so that's kind of the main focus there and of course the rpg all right moving on from that we have uh, horror game show the board game and this one is coming out soon as well I, I believe some of this month I don't have an exact date they don't list it on their Facebook they don't list it on their website I saw an ad for it once but didn't note it uh, companies need to get better at telling us when the heck their game launches but I guess if you if you're not putting it in your website I don't know what you want from me <laughs> so but it is coming out soon uh, and again it's kind of an interesting take where you you're essentially trying to make the best horror movie so it's it's very um, non scary group gruesome horror um in, in that it's like silly and over the top and whatnot uh but kind of an interesting take on that uh marvel zombies this is now going towards like pledge manager stuff they added a new expansion uh 20 for some extra hydro troops 
my comment on this. First of all, it's great if you want it. It makes the game easier. So if you're wanting the game even easier, more minis makes it easier because you don't run out of minis. Also, these are not new sculpts. So these are just printing 14 of the same thing they have. In other words, this costs them change, pocket change to make. The fact that they're selling for 20 bucks is kind of mind boggling to me. Like literally each mini is like pennies. Like it, it's just the plastic cost. They already have the mold and they are already making the mold. Printing out 14 more is not very difficult at all. So I'm kind of surprised it's, it's marked at 20 when it's just a group of minis that aren't even new. Um, in, my, in my opinion, it should be 10 and they'd still be making profit on it. So uh, 20 is pretty good for them. It's, it's very odd to see that. Like if they were new sculpts or alternate sculpts or they had different rules, so there was development time, but there's no new development time, there's no new art, there's no new nothing. Um, and it doesn't come with any cards, I believe, either. So it literally is just um, if you happen to spawn enough uh, through various situations, I'm assuming. But that's the, the story of Marvel Zombies. Uh, Kings Forlorn launched as well. They have a ton of stuff. Um, the prices will continue to go up just like Antrospass Odyssey. So if you were interested in Kingdoms Forlorn, I would check it sooner rather than later for your own wallet's benefit, but don't feel pressured into it either. And actually, if you want to have a good reason not to, you can delay it and then see how much it, it increased and be like, oh man, I could have gone it for cheaper. Now I can't back it at all. That'll save you some money too. But that's also not how you get Kingdoms for Lawrence. So depends on how much you want it, I guess. But that launched as well. Uh, moving on from that, we have Uthia Torment of Resurrection. That is coming out as well. It, again, it has the pack cost. They show here, though, by the way, all the cards up front. Here is the ultimate bundle. This is all of it. A ton of game. These minis are like big too like this is a this is just a lot of game is what this is uh so yeah kind of interesting to see that uh this is what happens when you have these reprints you know where it's like here's a whole kickstarter plus a whole nother kickstarter or a whole nother crowdfunding game um it, it's like two crowdfundings in one it, it's massive all right Let's talk about this. Uh, so now we're in controversies. I have a few here. This is probably the more edgy one or something like that. But I think it's because of what people expect me to say instead of what I am going to say. So why can't they review Viticulture World yet? Well, the reason they say that is because um, it's it's about like making wine and stuff like that. But for the South American one, uh, they have some conquistadors that you know, did deal with wine, but they also dealt in like genocide and stuff like that. And there you can like essentially use them for their benefits. Um, and uh, um, um, I don't know the, the ladies' names here, but the themer, so one's a thinker, one's a themer, that's their channel. I'll link to it down below, of course. Um, the themer uh, starts to cry and says she's from there and it's just terrible to, you know, include such terrible people in there. My comment, first of all, critiques of an industry, I can't go against that. I do that all the time, okay? So I think it's very valid to critique an industry, to critique what games choose and how they choose to do it. For instance, I did a Hitler video once where I said, hey, it's probably not a great idea to put like Hitler using your product. I think that's putting it too far. That's in bad taste, okay? So that was my take, just like they have this take. Totally valid. What I am concerned with is that she's able to critique and I guess I just want to make sure she's okay um you know there there's a lot of bad things in this world and uh to to break down in like tears over something like a, a card in a game from something from hundreds of years ago um that it, it, it just seems too much to me um and and I, I I think she probably needs to calm down a little bit if she was wanting to um, critique things uh, more appropriately uh, because you don't want to get too emotional like that. And I'm not talking like getting heated or getting upset. Um, it, it's 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 more the like a emotionally damaged kind of thing. Like I, I I just I don't want it to like ruin her whole day because this card was here. Does that make sense? Like you need to be able to look at it, face it, critique it, think about it, right? All that kind of stuff. So um, anyway, that's my, that's my concern there. So I just, I, I hope she improves in that. So, so we're able to hear her thoughts better um, and, and, and she's healthier while doing it, right? It's kind of the whole point there. Um, and I, and I totally get it. I, 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 I'm 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 more connected to some of that stuff than I've shared and I, I don't need to waste video time on it because it doesn't affect me like it's affecting her um but like I I, I do get it um I just hope that um she can 
Uh, I hope she's okay because she's like actually like crying tears, tissue, stuff like that, like visibly shaken from this. And uh, while I think it's a very valid criticism and uh, th they actually changed the card, by the way, they already are going to change the card. They had uh, some people from um, uh, th that location that uh, um, did with the wine stuff. So it's actually kind of educational now. It's kind of cool. Um, so again, valid criticism and it actually helped hopefully make the game even better. Um, but the, the delivery of it hopefully can can get smoother for her because nobody needs to be upset all the time like that like like <laughs> you know hopefully she feels better now at least okay so that's my two cents on that okay um bgg tiny epic vikings oh boy okay so the criticism that was uh announced is that uh she this lady over here is hypersexualized and that they haven't learned their lesson from the last time if you recall the last time they had somebody in like a leather outfit that showed some cleavage and this one they have an archer lady that's like doing some kind of side shot thing now i actually have seen rambo make this move and i've seen hawkeye make this move but that's besides the point um you might notice that she's very very large that's because she's actually a goddess um the scotty i guess is is the the remark there there was actually a lot more pushback on this um, the only thing I would, I would, and, and then people post like silly things like, Hey, there's some wild, wild archery shots there. Um, I think the big thing there is just kind of pick your battle. But I think the other thing that kind of concerns me is that, um, the moment they see someone like that, they instantly think of them sexually. And I don't get that at all. I don't think you need to put layers of fur on a woman or cover her up and, and, uh, uh, you know, product or something like that because otherwise if you just see the woman that you think that she's being sexualized um d d to me that, that that's a little concerning on like why you're looking at it like that because i didn't see that at all looking at this i just saw some cool archery person doing the shide thing which again i see male and females do the especially the leg up and everything i'm serious rambo's done it hawkeye's done it it's a very common thing um but i guess they can't like wear pants that aren't bagging otherwise you're you're sexual i don't know it just it just seems kind of odd to me um especially for something like a goddess right i mean she's literally taller than mountains there so i don't know very odd to to look at that and see that um there was in the same pushback but i thought i'd mention it just so you knew because because the problem is I can't read this conversation because BGG just like removes everything like this one's even worse there there's like five posts on here so, I mean, it's kind of a bummer. I can only see what's survived and what's survived seems fairly good. Um, but I, I'm kind of doubtful that everything was absolutely terrible either. So it, it's just kind of a bummer that we can't talk about this uh, because it's obviously a point of contention, right? Some people are like, hey, this is like a thing. And the original person isn't the only person seeing that, right? Like there are other people saying like, yeah, I think that's sexualized too. And that, you know, they're, they're objectifying the woman there or whatever. And then other people are saying, you know, it's a goddess and it's a very common pose. And actually I could see a guy being like that. And you know, whatever it is, right? Um, it, it's just unfortunate we can't hash it on Board Game Geek. Board Game Geek is useless for that. Um, you just get nowhere, and it's unfortunate. It, it really is. So that's kind of a bummer that we can't discuss basic things like a pitcher. Okay, last one here, but a big one. This is this is going to get a, a company in trouble. I can tell you that much. Okay, so Hexplore it. I think we've all heard of it. They've had three campaigns now, I think, on this. Anyway... What happened here? Okay, so this is uh, the Sands of Sharks or whatever, and they announce game or campaign mode. This is during the campaign they announced. This is update number 14. What is campaign mode? They're announcing this fantastic looking campaign here, right? You can see the layout and all that stuff. Each story allows players to, you know, build their heroes. They're going to have three different campaigns and they're giving away the PDFs but only if you back now. What does this mean for Kickstarter? Our plan is to release campaign mode in a digital standalone PDF. Our first story takes place, blah, blah, blah. And then it says that to put quite simply, it it's the first time we started working on and content plan for the mostly complete. Please take heart, know this. When will we get campaign mode? Our goal is to complete the campaign mode by the end of the year. Who gets access to it? We are only sending these PDFs to backers uh, who pledge during this campaign and they would reiterate that when they announced the second one and the third one that the only way you're going to get these pdfs is you're going to get them for free if you back the campaign okay and people actually backed this for this people spent hundreds of dollars 
Uh, I have people personally reaching out to me saying, I spent $340 on this because I we love campaign games and we wanted to get this. It sounded really cool. It looks great. Um, and I imagine it's, it's fantastic. Um, and so I spent all this money to buy this campaign game. Well, the problem is now, like two and a half years later, uh, literally they've, they've launched another campaign, another Hexplorer campaign on GameFound that funded, and they barely even update this one, but they finally did to essentially say, you're not getting it. They inflated it to be over 300,000 words. It's this monstrous thing now. And they're saying, we can't spend all of our time making this and give it away for free. So we're not going to. So what people got is what they got. They will be releasing about 90 minutes worth of trial content for you to buy the physical book, this book here. Um, but the PDFs that people backed for, they are not getting anymore. They're saying we will not give that out. Now, I understand wanting to be paid for your work, okay? I understand 300,000 words with like three authors writing it. That's huge. That's a massive amount of content. That's awesome. You're the one that chose to make it that way. Um, this is something I'm going to be talking about more. I'll probably have a topic video on it on the, like, like the, the complaint, oh, shipping's so expensive. Well, you're the one that chose to have 12 different expansions to where, you know, like, like if you think like, you know, Bloodborne or anything like that, like, like these giant, you know, whole bunch of mini, like you choose the scope and size of your game, right? And so, you know, it, you, you, you can't like yell about like small profit margins, but then also be like, but we're also going to sell a game with 150 minis and 60, you, you know, unique sculpts, like, Tone it down then, like, it, you know, like, my goodness. Um, same thing, they could have done the normal PDF thing they would have wanted to do and then made a epic version of it that's like printed in a book or just use the book print to, you know, uh, help fund the PDF or there are a, a ton of things they could have done. They could have come to their backers with saying some options or saying, hey, what do you guys think? What can we do to, to make it this epic for you, but then do that or, you know, it, Again, just just do your normal thing and then expand on it. You know, I, I covered several reprints here that expanded on with an expansion. Have an epic campaign Kickstarter if you want. There are tons of options besides saying we're not giving you what you wanted. The problem is they're going to be listed here. This is Board Game Geeks controversial and fraudulent Kickstarters. Now it's cool that they have this list. It's nine pages of this, but because it's Board Game Geek, it's like. From like it looks like it's like from the 90s man and it's like you, there's no like really easy comprehensive list you just kind of have to scroll through essentially a weird concatenated forum to find things so whatever but either way like people word of mouth will go and nobody will uh, trust that you're going to deliver what you're going to deliver if people just spent hundreds of dollars to fund you and then two and a half years later you're saying never mind you're not getting that first of all it's way late and that's it's way late because you inflated, you made it this big. You didn't have to make it this big. You chose to, and now you're choosing to not give it to people. And that's a real big bummer. So yeah, shame on them for that. Um, you 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 do what you're supposed to do. You were told, or you you said you would give the money. <laughs> you said you would give the PDFs. So you need to give the PDFs. It's as simple as that. There is no ifs, ands, or buts. If you want to talk about price and about getting paid for it, first of all, you did when people backed your game. That was part of the product they were buying. You're saying, for this price, I'm giving you this. They gave you that price. You need to give them that. So first of all, I don't care because they already did pay you. You already did get paid. You just didn't get paid enough because you want to do more. Well, if you want to do more, you need to talk with your backers, the people who gave you money years ago and are still waiting on this and try and figure something out with them because the only reason you're doing what you're doing is because of them. So uh, yeah, I, I guess it's kind of like a, a a, a screw you to backers, in which case I respond, screw you back to them. Um, that's that's a terrible attitude to have. It's a, it's a pathetic and and weaselly attitude to try and get out of a commitment and a promise that you made. You want to take the money that people gave you for the product you said you'd give and not give the product out. And you're even admitting that you won't. Um, it just boggles my mind. And it's going it, to, it, it's, it's going to, bite you in the butt. It already has. People are, are uh, commenting here. People are commenting on their other one. Backers are not happy. And I can't blame them. If you backed Hexplore it because they promised a campaign mode and now years later they say, you know what, actually never mind, you're not getting that. No, no. Uh, if you want it, you'll have to wait still longer 
and pay for it, but we're not giving it to you anymore, even though we listed it as something that we give you, um, which is just a trash tier move. So um, Jonathan Maurici, I don't know how involved you are in this. If this is you, shame on you, sir. Shame on you. Um, you people deserve better than what you give them. I can tell you that much. So anyway, that's it. Guys, that is the update. There was a lot there. My goodness. I hope you appreciated the grand scope of this update. If you did, let me know any feedback you have. I'd love to hear from you. Or if I missed anything, do I need to add something to the list in the description? Do we need to discuss something? Do you need to let me know about something? There is that comment field down below. Thank you so much. Again, also check out Into the Am. They make freaking cool shirts that uh, will get you tons of compliments. They even give me compliments, and I never get compliments, but they I, I hear a nice shirt all the time when I wear their shirts. So anyway, that's it. That's all I had. Have a great rest of your day. I'll talk to you guys again very, very soon. Bye, guys.